People feel like it's a time to panic, amen, but I'm not panicking at all. Amen. Somebody said, asked me the other day when I came to one of my kids' event things at school, and one parent said, are you exhausted because of the new president? I said, exhausted? I said, I'm not exhausted at all because I'm not going to grow weary and get tired, amen? I'm going to mount up with wings as eagles, amen? I'm going to run and not get weary. I'm going to walk and not faint, Amen. Come on now, church. I'm not tired. Amen. I'm just getting started. Amen. Right. This is going to be the best year I've ever had. Yeah. Come on, y'all have some witnesses in this house today. Yeah. Hallelujah. You exhausted. Something is wrong. Maybe you need to get somewhere and sit down. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on now. Exhausted? No, I'm not exhausted at all. That's not God's plan. It's not for me to be exhausted. Nowhere in his words that thou shalt be exhausted. Oh, come on now, church. Come on now, we are more than conquerors, amen? Yes, yes. His plan is to prosper us, amen? Even as our soul prospers, yes. amen? Ain't that the word? Yes. Amen, hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God, I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4. Amen, I'm just going to share with you, amen, just what the Lord has placed on my heart, amen? God has told me it's time, sometimes you've got to get back to the basics, amen? Yes. Because we need to be fully equipped. That's what God has been ministering to me is that we need to be fully equipped yeah. to do battle. Amen. Yeah. If we are missing weapons, amen, we are going to lose the fight. Amen. Right. So we need to be fully equipped. Amen. And I believe that's what God has been doing through me. Amen. I pray that that's what God has been doing through me is helping the believers to get equipped to do battle. Amen. Because you got to do battle every day. Right. Come on now. If you ain't fighting, you getting beat. <laughs> uh, come on, church. Do I have some saints in this house today? If you're not fighting, you're getting beat. Amen? And I don't like getting beat. Amen? I'm a sore loser. My kids will tell you I am a sore loser. When they beat me in video game, I'm ready to just throw the control somewhere. Because I hate losing. Amen? I don't know too many people that And Morgan laughing back there and shaking their head. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hate losing. And they know I hate losing. So why not equip ourselves to win the battle? Amen? Come on, church. Hallelujah. So go with me, like I said, to Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4. And I want you to go to verse 12 and verse 13. And I'm going to pray before we read this. Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now. Father God, I thank you for your word, first off. I thank you, Lord, that your word that you have spoken to me, Lord, will be delivered to your people, Father, clearly and concisely, Lord. Anoint my mouth, anoint my tongue that I speak what thus says the Lord. Thank you for speaking to my heart today, for using your servant mightily. May your Holy Spirit fill this place to overflowing, and we will feast off the overflow. Send your manna down from heaven, Lord. Yeah. We need a word from you today. Yeah. Yeah. If there be any hindrances or any distractions that would try to come into the minds of the believers or come into this place, may they be removed in Jesus' name. Yeah. We have the mind of Christ. We have that peace that passes all understanding in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 through 13 Reads like this. I'm reading in the NIV version. It says, for the word of God. Somebody say the word of God. Word is alive and active. That means it's moving. That means it's moving. Oh, come on, church. When something's alive and active, that means it's constantly moving. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit Joints and marrows. It gets down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Do I have some witnesses right. in this church today? Hallelujah. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That's why you don't have to judge nobody. That's right. Let the word be the judge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, church. Yeah. You ain't got to yeah. judge nobody. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, judge lest she be judged. Let the word of God judge. Amen. Because it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. It gets right down to the heart of the matter. <laughs> Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eye of him to whom we must give an account. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the word of God today. 
And the title of my message is, it's more than just a book. All right. Come on, church. It's more, the Bible is more than just a book. It's not just something that you sit on your shelf and you got a bunch of books in between. Oh, come on, church. It's not just a, a book that you pick up once every two, two days in a year. Come on now. It's not just something that you sit around in your house and, and it collects dust. The Bible is powerful. It's more than that. Somebody say it's more than that. When trouble strikes, we have a variety of places we can turn to for help. Mm -hmm. yes. But the first option should always be the Bible. Yes. The yes. first option should always be the Word of God. Mm -hmm. After all, it's no ordinary book. Yes, it's the unfolding revelation of the Almighty God. Yes. From beginning, Genesis, to the end, Revelations, the Lord demonstrates His love and His concern for His people. Amen. He gives us amazing promises and has the infinite power to fulfill those promises. Yes, right now. Yes. Oh, come on, church. Yes. And it will help us. It gives us help for every situation, mm -hmm. every circumstance, every, everything we go through. Amen. The, the, the help for those situations are found in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of the Bible? Okay. So that's what we're going to learn today. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of the Bible? God has given us his written word for the following reasons. And the first reason is to reveal the one true God. Right. To clear out all of the confusion that there is only one God. one God. I want to say that very boldly today. There is only one God. One God. There is no other God but Jehovah. Right. Well, come on, church. This word right here. See, there's, so, there's a lot of different books out there. And a lot of them tell you different stories. But this book right here tells you there is only one God. One God. Oh, come on, church. And there is no confusion in that. Amen. There is one God. Amen. And there is one Savior, which is Jesus Christ. Without the revelation of scripture, we'd be very limited and we'd be in error in the concept of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Through his word, we learn of his attributes, his character, and his power. Yeah. The word of God says in Psalms chapter 25, verse 4 through 5, show me your ways, Lord. Mm -hmm. Teach me your paths. Mm -hmm. Guide me in your truths and teach me, for you are God my Savior. And my hope is in you all the day long. All right. See, the word of God. See, David realized that it was God's word, amen, that was, it, God revealed himself through his word. Yes. He knew, he learned about the love of God, and he learned about all the things that makes God who he is yes. by his word. Yes. And that's why he said, show me your way. Show me your word. Well, show me. And, and the, the way for us to learn the ways of the Lord is to get into the word. Yes. Amen. The second point is, is that it leads us to salvation. Amen. We need salvation. The world needs salvation. Yes. Money will get you a little way, but salvation will get you into heaven. Yes. Oh, come on, church. Yes. The Bible reveals our sinful condition and God's plan to rescue us. Don't you know God had the best bailout plan ever? Oh, come on now. The government has so many bailout plans, but their bailout plan got strings attached to it. And when that run out, what you got? But thank God that Jesus, that God had the ultimate bailout plan when Adam messed up. And was sending his son. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because of his love, his grace, and his mercy, he made a way to forgive sins and to reconcile us to himself. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 19. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, mm -hmm. the new creation has come. Oh, Isn't that an awesome thing? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. God does a new thing? Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. The old has gone. Somebody say the old is gone. The, the old is gone. gone. The new is here. Somebody say the new is here. New is here. God is doing a new thing. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. All this is from what? God. God. Yeah. Who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And gave us what? The ministry of reconciliation. So it's not just for us. It's so we can reach out to others. Yes. Oh, come on now. Yes. Salvation is not just for you to hoard it up. It's for you to get the word out. Yes. Come on now. It's yes. for you to say, you know what? I'm saved and you can be saved. Yes. The same Jesus that saved me can save you from your sin. Yes. He gave us. He reconciled us so we can bring others into that reconciliation. Yes. Yes. That God 
was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. Not counting people's sins again. Thank God he didn't count our sins against us. Thank God he sent Jesus to cover our sin. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And he was committed to us. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So it's to, the word is to lead us to salvation. And it's also for us to lead others to Jesus. Number three. To understand how to live a godly life. We will not know how to walk a godly life if we don't get into the Word. Right. The Word is our absolute guide to living a godly life. Right. If you're having trouble living a godly life, it's because you're not getting into the Word. The word is your roadmap. If you need to know how to live, it deals with every aspect of your life. It deals with marriage. It deals with children. It deals with sex, money, love. Every situation that you deal with is in the word of God. Oh, come on, church. And we need to go there. We need to know something. It's in the word of God. And I love this. Amen. Many passages of the Bible, especially in the epistles, instruct us how to live a holy and obedient life that display Christ's character within us. When we sin, his word teaches us how to experience restoration through repentance. 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, what? He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Right. It lets us know that if we mess up, amen, that's not the end of the story. Right. Come on now, if we fall short, that's not the end of the story. If we come up short, that's not the end of the story. God had a plan. If we confess our sin, confessing our sin, that's the best thing you can do. Yes. And say, Lord, I fell. Yes. Lord, I messed up. Yes. Lord, I, 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 I messed up again. But I know that if I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me. Yes. That's what we have to realize. And that's what the word teaches us. Yes. It shows us that if we fall, glory to God, that's not the end of the story. Yes, right. And in James 4, 8, it says, come near to God and he'll come near to you. That's a simple plan right there. Draw near to God and God will draw near to you. The more you get into the word, the more the word will get into you. Oh, come on, church. And you'll be able to walk this walk. Amen. That's how you can live a godly life. And it says, wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. The word is saying it's time for the believers to get right. Yeah. See, we can't expect the world to get right if we ain't acting right. right. Oh, come on, church. Yeah. This is why it is that wash your hands. It's time for believers to wash our hands. We got some dirty hands. Yeah. If you're doing dirty stuff, you got dirty hands. Yeah, that's right. If you're playing in the dirt all day, what you expect your hands to be? Yeah. Oh, come on, yeah. church. I know y'all hear me out there. And it says purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and... And well, change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Right. He will lift you up. Humble yourself. Before. Realize you can't do it on your own. Realize we do make mistakes. Amen. But thank God we can come to him and say, Lord, I messed up. Wash me. That's why David said, cleanse me with hyssop. He said, I, I got my sins are so strong, I need a strong detergent to clean them out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, come on now. I need something strong. And hyssop was a strong thing to clean things. He said, cleanse me with hyssop and I'll be clean. Yeah. Glory to God. So the word shows us how to, how to live a godly life. Mm -hmm. Number four, it shows us, it tells us it, to, to know how to serve the Lord. We need to know how to serve the Lord. How do we serve the Lord? How can we be used of the Lord? The word of God will show us that. The word of God will give us a plan on how we can be used. How we can use our gifts and our talents. First Peter 4 Peter 4.10 says each of you should use whatever gift you have received. Everybody has a gift. But see what the problem is is we let our gifts lay dormant. And what will happen is if we get into the word, the word of God will let you know that gift that's inside of you. Yeah. And God will open up that gift. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the word of God said your gift will make room for you. Right. Oh, come on, church. There's a lot of sense that God gifts just laying dormant. Yeah. I believe this is the year our gifts are going to flourish. Yeah. Amen. I believe the gifts that God has put in each and every one of us are going to come to fruition. Yeah. Amen. Right. Right. Some of us have musical talent. Some of us have technical talent. Yeah. Come on. They just yeah. laying inside. It's time to open up. Amen. Come on, church. Do I have some witnesses in this house today? It's time for us to.
to be the ones that the world is coming to yes. for help. Amen. Yes. Instead of us running to the world. Yes. But those gifts, God said, use whatever gifts you have, yes. receive to serve others. Yes. It's time to serve other people. Yes. Come on now, we served ourselves long enough, amen? amen. It's time to serve others. Yes. There are people out there that need, and those gifts that God has given us is to help other people. Yes. Right. It says, as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Right. Gifts have various forms. Yes. So I encourage a believer to stir up those yes. gifts. Go before the Lord and say, Lord, I, I, I want to know what my gift is. Yes. And don't you know God will reveal it to you? He'll show you that thing that he put inside of you. He may have put it in you when you were a little kid. And let me tell you something. It's never too late to experience God's blessings in your life. It's never too late for that gift to come to fruition. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So we need to know how to serve the Lord. Number six. It warns us of the consequences of sin. Mm -hmm. We need to know that there are consequences to sin. Amen. We can't just live any old kind of way and expect God to bless it. Right. Oh, come on now, church. There's a lot of believers that think that they can live any old kind of way and be successful. Mm -hmm. That's not the way God ordained it. Hallelujah. At the beginning of creation, before sin entered the world, God warned Adam and Eve of the consequences of disobedience. He told them that the day you eat of this, you will surely die. That was the consequence of sin and disobedience. Throughout the scripture, this warning continues. We may not want to think about the results of our sinful choices. We kind of want to push that stuff to the side. <laughs> but we got to deal with sin. Amen. Right. See, if we don't deal with sin, sin will rule us. Yes, right. Oh, come on, church. Y'all yeah. right. got to hear me there. Yeah. If we don't deal with the sin problem, we're not going to get to where God wants us to be. Right. So, so that's what, we, we may not want to deal with it, but we got to understand, there is a principle of sowing and reaping. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on now, church. Right. There's a principle of what you sow, you're going to reap. Right. Although the consequences of sin may not be obvious immediately, mm -hmm. we will eventually reap what we've sown and more of it. Yeah. See, when you plant a seed in the ground, you don't see what you planted right away. Right. But eventually it's going to come up. Right. Oh, come on now. So if you sow bad things, you're going to reap those things. And that's why the word says in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Thank God for that gift. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the wages of sin is death. We need to know that there are consequences. Mm -hmm. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. That means, God, you ain't fooling nobody. Yeah, right. Which, oh, come on now. You might do dirt to somebody in private, but believe God sees it. Yeah, right. That's what this word says. Right? That's why I tell people, don't worry about getting somebody back. Right. You ain't got to worry about that. Because this word says, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. You can't mock God. You, you might think you're getting over by doing something in secret. I, I don't care what they do to you. A man reaps what he sows. That's, right. That's the word of God right there. Right. So you ain't got to worry about that. Amen. All you got to do is look up to heaven and say, I know whatever is done to me is going to come back to that person. Right. You ain't even got to worry about it. Right. You ain't even got to concern yourself because the word of God says, a man reaps what he sows. Right. And most of the time, you reap worse than what you sow. Right. Come on now, church. Right. Hallelujah. We got to understand that. And the word will let you understand that there are consequences to sin. And you may not see them right now, but you will see them. Amen. Number six. It tells us, uh, tells us of God's unconditional love for us. See, we like to throw that word love around so easily. We just sling it, oh, I love you. But do we really know what real love is? Oh, come on, church. We love you. We love somebody they loan us five dollars. You know, if Wayne loaned me twenty dollars, Wayne, I love you, man. You gave me twenty. But but then what happened when there ain't no twenty? Is that love still there? Oh, come on now, church. Y'all better hear me now. We, we throw that word, I love you, around, but, but the word of God teaches us what real love is. Yeah. There was this old uh, R&B song that said, real love, I'm looking for some real love. Y'all yeah. know that song, don't yeah. act like you know. <laughs> some of y'all was tapping your feet under the chair while I was singing. <laughs> she was, this artist was looking for some real love, but real love is godly love. Yeah. See, godly love tells you that it's unconditional. Yeah. It, it's not 
uh, based on your money. Yeah. It's not based on how much I give you or how much you give me. Yeah. It's unconditional. Yeah. Regardless of what you did, God still loves you. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. In spite of what you did, God still loves you. Yeah. When you was out there in the club acting up, God still loved you. Oh, that's right. Y'all not hear me today. I know I got some saints that been in the church their whole life. When you was acting up, wilding out in sin, God still loved you. He loved you so much that he sent his son for you. Unconditional. It's not, see, when you tell somebody you love them, I need you to really think about real love. Amen. Real love, because you can wake up in the morning and say, boy, do I really love this person? <laughs> boy, and your kids test your love too. They're like, ooh. Some days, Lord, you just be like, man. But this love is just, this, this is one that loves you. You just want to put your hands on them, you know. But you want to hug them, though. Not, not hurt them. You want to hug them, too. My kids back there laughing, you know. But, but we need to understand what real love is. Amen. It's his very, love is God's very nature. Because he loved the world, he gave his son. So that whoever believed in his son could have life after this life. Praise God. John 3.16, we, we, we say that verse so many times, but it's such an awesome word because it says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Love it. There's a giving involved in real love. It's not just receiving. It's not just what can I get. It's giving. He gave to us when we didn't even deserve this gift. Oh, come on, church. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes, somebody say whoever, whoever. in him shall not perish but have what? Eternal life. That's what it's about. Eternal life. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then I love this. This scripture, we need to meditate on it. This is love. Not the worldly love. Not the worldly love that I love you only for a couple minutes and I, until I get everything I can get out of you, then the love is gone. Come on now. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. That's real love. That he loved us while we weren't even right. When we mess up and get just totally messed up in our sin, he still loved us. This is love. Not that we love God. And people say, oh, you know, I was looking for God. You wasn't looking for That's God. Right, too. Come on now. You wasn't looking for You was looking for that next high. Mm -hmm. You was looking for that next fix. You was looking for that, that, that next love. But, but, but thank God that while we were yet sinners, he died for yeah. us. Yeah. He says he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Hallelujah. He loved you that much. You. That's real love. Somebody say, That's real love. Yeah. That's real love. Yeah. Hallelujah. The word tells us how we can be saved from our sins. Although sin condemned us, the Lord doesn't want us to stay in that condition. The word says there is no condemnation now. Hallelujah. He is not a God of condemnation. That's why he has provided a means for our salvation on the basis of our faith. It says in Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 9. For it is by grace. Somebody say it's by grace. by grace. It's not by anything you did. It's by the grace of God you have been saved Thank through you. faith. And this is not from yourself. It is what? A gift of God. Not by works so that anyone can boast. You ain't got nothing to boast about. And that's what the word will show you. Amen. That God made a way. Amen. That God made a way to save us from our sins. And I'm thankful for that. Number eight, it tells us why Jesus came to earth. See, sin, when Adam sinned, that created a void between God and man. As you see in the picture, there was a void. When Adam sinned, when Adam uh, decided to disobey the, wor the word of the Lord, amen, there was a big chasm in between us and the Lord. And that's why God sent Jesus to bridge that gap. Christ came to rescue us from the destruction of sin by providing a way for forgiveness. Thank God for forgiveness. Oh, come on, church. Thank God for forgiveness. Thank God that Jesus Christ bridged the gap so we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Oh, come on now. So we can find mercy when we need it. Oh, come on. Do I, can somebody give God some praise for that? That Jesus Christ came to, to create that, to bridge that gap. Amen. He tore down the veil. Amen. Before we had to send a guy in and, and we didn't even know if that guy was right. <laughs> we had to send in a priest to go in and we were hoping and praying that he would be okay. But now we can come boldly into the throne of grace. We can go right to him and say, Lord, I need your help. I'm not sending nobody ahead of me. Amen. I'm going to the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Jesus bridged that gap. He tore the veil down so we can go to the Father directly. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. You, Hallelujah. And then he sh it shows us in the word why the virgin birth was so necessary. Every person born since Adam has inherited a sin nature. But the only acceptable sacrifice for sin had to be perfect. Yeah, yeah. Since Jesus was born of a virgin without an earthly father, he was the perfect lamb of God. Yeah, yeah. Since the Adam sin, sin came down through all the generations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jesus had to not come from a man, but he had to come from the spirit. Yeah, yeah. So we see in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Therefore just as sin entered into the world through one man, Death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because of sin. Yeah. So death was passed on down the line until Jesus came. Yeah. Oh, come on, church. Yeah. Yeah. And then it says in Romans 5, 17, For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, <laughs> how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness Reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so that uh, spotless lamb, amen, that spotless, uh, 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 perfect lamb came through to save us. Because one man messed up, God sent one man to get it right. Oh, come on, church. Do I have some witnesses in this house? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And then it showed us, explained why Jesus had to die on the cross. He came as the sacrificial lamb to bear the sins of the world in his body. So we could be forgiven. And it says in 1 Peter 1, 19 through 20. But with the precious blood. Somebody say the precious blood. Precious blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Like that song said, I know it was the blood for me. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. But with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without what? Blemish or defect. It had to be the perfect sacrifice in order to cover all of our sin. Oh, come on, church. It couldn't be a lamb with a blemish on it. It couldn't be somebody that was flawed. It had to be someone flawless to cover all of our flaws. He was chosen before the creation of the world. But was revealed in these last times for what? Your sake. Isn't that awesome? The world revealed. That's why Jesus had to go to the cross. Amen. He had to be the sacrificial lamb to die so that we could live. And it also explains the resurrection. I love that. That it doesn't just end with his crucifixion. God raised him from the dead as proof that Jesus truly is the son of God. Whose sacrifice was sufficient to pay for our sin. That's why we sing that song, Jesus paid it all. We don't know how much it cost, but we know that the debt was paid. Oh, come on, church. Don't you love when your debt is paid? When you get that slip that says your debt is canceled? Oh, come on, church. When you, when you get that card, uh, uh, you get the title to your car that says if you own this car now. Oh, come on now. Y'all know what I'm talking about. When you get that credit card last statement that says the credit card debt is canceled. That's what Jesus did when he resurrected from the dead. He canceled all of our debt. We had a huge debt and we can't even, like that song said, we'll never know how much it cost to see our sins on that cross. But we know that Jesus paid it all. Somebody say Jesus paid it all. And Jesus said to, 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 to the woman in, in John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. There was death before I came, but now I am the resurrection. Because she was like, well, you know, Lazarus will rise in the resurrection. Jesus said, no, I'm here. All right. he, oh, come on, church. Jesus said, I'm here. you talking to the resurrection. That's why we had, to, the Bible had to explain to us the resurrection that's in Jesus Christ. In Matthew 28, 18, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I got it all. I went to the cross. Now I've raised from the dead. And now all power has been given to me. And now I'm going to give it to you. Oh, okay, glory to God. That's what the word shows us. Amen. That he is the resurrection. He has all power. And he is given that power to us. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. 
And then it tells us where he is right now. So we need to know where he is right now. Some people don't even know where he is right now. They just think, well, you know, I'm just talking to the man upstairs. No, you ain't talking to the man upstairs. Glory to God. You're talking to Jesus Christ that's on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to God. After his resurrection, Christ ascended to heaven where he's seated at the right hand, making intercession for us. So that means when you're going through something, God is making, Jesus is making intercession for you. Oh, come on now, church. When you in that interview, going for that job, God, Jesus is making intercession for you. You're saying, you know what? My servant messed up a little bit, but he confessed his sin. Now he's ready for that promotion. God, put that promotion on. Oh, come on, church. It says, who did it? Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ ain't the one that's condemning you because he's, he's talking to God on your behalf. He's saying, I know my, my, my servant messed up, but he's getting back on the right track, Lord. Oh, come on now. That sin that he committed, my blood covers that. I know the devil's trying to accuse him, but that's his job. But my job is to make intercession for them. Yeah. Oh, come on, church. It says more than that. Who is raised to life and is at the right hand of God who is making intercession for us. Jesus is interceding for you right now. Yeah. So you're not in this alone. You're not going through this by yourself. Jesus is up there making intercession for you. He's pleading on your behalf. Yeah. Oh, come on now. You got to get a hold of that. Hallelujah. He, he, it's not God who condemned. Christ is the one who's pleading on your behalf. He's saying, you know what? My son can make it. Yeah. Look at him. I know he's been through some things, but there's something inside of him that's about to come out. There's some character that's being built up in my servant. I see Pastor Mike is going through some things in his body, but I see his faith beginning to increase. Oh, come on now. I see healing in his body. Lord, I see a breakthrough coming in Victory Fellowship. They've been going through some things, but I thank God, you know what? Your word is about to make, uh, is about to come to fruition in Victory Fellowship. I hear Jesus making an intercession for us. So we need to know where he is now. Glory to God. Then it reveals where God the Father is. Glory to God. He is still seated on his throne. Oh, come on, church. We have a new president, but God is still seated on the throne. Oh, come on, church. Y'all better hear me. I don't care who is in, in charge down here. He is ultimately the head of everything. Oh, come on, church. See, we got to recognize God is still on the throne. There is nothing that can take him off his throne. There is no vote that can happen down here that can take him off his throne. Oh, y'all can hear me in church today. And like rivers of the water, come on church, he'll take a king and take his heart and turn it any way he pleases. But the key is we got to get right. Oh, come on now, church. We got to do what we need to do and God will take care of the king. Come on, church. Hallelujah. He is still seated on the throne. He is actively reigning over the affairs of mankind. Paul said this. Uh, to the to these unbelievers, he said, "The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, right. and does not live in temples built by human hands." Right. See, they thought they could put up a little idol on a shelf and talk about to the unknown God. <laughs> what you mean, the unknown God? I don't. There is no unknown. I know God. Oh, come on, church. I know Jehovah Jireh because He's my provider. I know Jehovah Rapha because He's my healer. I know God. Because he had protected me when I couldn't even see the dangers around me. Oh, come on now. He was telling them there's no unknown God. You can't put God in this little box right here. God can't be made in a porcelain doll. Come on now. He don't live in a temple built by human hands. His dwelling place is the heaven. He's too great for that. Oh, come on, church. Somebody say, he's too great for that. Come on now. Hallelujah. He doesn't live down here. Amen. He doesn't live in temple made by human hand. He is greater than that. He is dwelling in the heavenly. David said in Psalm chapter 115, 3, our God is in heaven. I don't know about your God. Your little G may be down here somewhere, but he got eyes and he can't see. He got hands and he can't feel. Right. But David said, our God is in heaven. And he does whatever pleases him. That's the God I serve. Amen. He is the God that is in heaven. Amen. So the word tells us, it not only tells us where Jesus is, it tells us where God is. The Bible is a trustworthy book. The scriptures are a message 
given to us by the Almighty God. And since it is the word of our Creator and our Savior, we can trust that it's true. Yeah. He says his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Therefore, it always leads us in the right way. Yeah, right. Oh, come on, church. Yeah. When you have a light in front of you, you can walk in the darkness because the light will expel the darkness. Yeah. He says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Everywhere I'm going, when I'm going, when I'm being led by the light, I'm going the right way. Yeah. When I'm in darkness, that means I've turned away from the light. Right. Oh, come on, church. Yeah. When I'm walking in darkness, and, and all of us know you can't walk around in darkness. Right. I have tried to do it. I tried to, to go around in my house in the dark without clicking the light switch and I've either stubbed my toe or bumped into a wall and a lot of us Christians have done that same thing. Oh, come on, church. We got to stop messing around in the dark, hurting ourselves and turn on the light. It's time to turn. And I said to them, what am I doing in the dark? Why don't I turn on the light and find what I'm looking for? Come on, church. Even my wife said, what are you looking for? And I said, you know, I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm looking to bump my head. That's what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to stub my toe. But why are we messing around in the dark when we got the light? Come on, church. He said, it's a light into my path. That means the word will guide you every step of the way. And if you're on a crooked path, it'll get you on the right path. Yes, real. Glory to God. Do I have some witnesses in this yeah. church today? Yeah. Oh, and though our world constantly changes, we know the word of God does not change. Oh, come on now, church. That's why I said in this verse, amen, the word of our God stands forever. So Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God endures forever. That's the only sure thing you can put your trust in is the word of God. Your grass is green one day and then it's brown. Oh, come on now, church. You got flowers one day and then they, then they die. You got trees one day and then the leaves fall down. But thank God that the word endures forever. His word is forever settled in heaven. Oh, come on now, church. The the world changes, people change, but thank God the word is the same. The truth is the same. So you can keep saying the same truth because the truth don't change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because he wants us to know how to live in a manner that honors him and benefits us. He's given us words of promise, words of joy, words of peace, words of instruction, and words of warnings. Glory to God. Thank God for his word. Somebody say thank God for his word. The Bible is more than just another book. And here are the reasons why the Bible is more than just another book. It's more than just a book to throw on the shelf. It's timeless. The truths of scripture are never outdated. Glory to God. I love that fact. Yeah, whatever Solomon went through, the same stuff is going on today. Oh, come on now. That's why he said get wisdom. Because the same situation that he saw, it may be a little bit different with technology, but the principle is the same. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff trying to take the same sin that was trying to take man out back then. It's the same sin right now. It just got a different look to it. Oh, come on. You're not hearing me today. So that's why the word of God is timeless. There's, there's no expiration date on the word of God. It's not like you read Genesis 1 today and it expires next week. It's not like a bottle of milk, amen. You can keep on reading it. That word that you read in 97 is still relevant in 2017. Oh, come on, church. That, oh, come on now. That word that you read when you was a little kid is, is even more relevant today. It's timeless. Hallelujah. The truths of scripture are never outdated yeah. and are still applicable for every, every situation that we face. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word. Yeah. So that means at the start of everything was the word of God. Right. That means that it started time and it's ended. Amen. Right. That means it's the beginning and the end. Yeah. The word of God said Jesus is the alpha and the omega. Yeah. The word of God never runs out. I love it. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. People ask, well, what was before the beginning? Nothing. It was just, it was just God at the beginning. That's all you need to know. Come on, church. In the beginning was the word. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know anything else. Hallelujah. 
And Luke 21, 33 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. My words will never get outdated. Let me tell you, that word is relevant now than it's ever been. Yes. We can't think of it as this is an old school teacher. No, this is a now school teacher. Right. Amen. Right. We need the word now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, we know that the next thing is it's infallible. That means it will never fail. Right. Since, the, since scripture is the revelation of the one true God, it has no errors. Oh, come on now, church. Because he is all powerful. He has the ability to speak through men, guiding them to write only what is true. Yeah. There may be concepts we don't understand, but that never invalidates the fact that God's word is the truth. All right. Second Peter 1, 20 through 21 says, but know this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. Yes, For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, mm -hmm. but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoken from oh, God. God. Yeah. It's, this is not about a man. This is about God. Yeah. God sent down the Holy Spirit to guide the men who wrote this word. Yeah. Right. That's what it is. That's what we learned. That. That's why it's infallible, because the spirit of truth guided the men to write this word. Yeah. The word is truth. It's infallible. That's what it's saying here. This word, that's what Peter said. The Holy Spirit spoke it from God to man. It's not about man's word. This is God's word. So we have, it's a trustworthy God. The Bible is adequate for every need. Just like I said, it covers everything. Everything you deal with from marriage to love to, to money, uh, sex, whatever it is. Addictions, it deals with it all. Children, it deals with peer pressure. Whatever it is, the word of God talks about it. Amen? Because it's infallible, we can confidently depend on it for wise guidance in every circumstance in life. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says all scripture, somebody say all scripture, all scripture, is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training. Look at all those things that the word is good for. It's good for teaching. You can be taught the word of God. It's good for reproof. It's good for getting you right. Oh, come on, church. It's good for correction. You need correction. That's why so many people stray away from the word because they don't like correction. That's right. Then nobody likes correction. Right. I didn't like it as a kid. I didn't like getting a switch on my leg. But hey, it taught me how to be a man, though. Oh, come on, church. It taught me what not to do again. I knew the next time. You know what? I don't think I want that switch anymore. Oh, come on, church. I, I don't know anybody that want a switch on their leg. But, but, but the word of God helps us to get right. Amen. Correction gets you on the right path. Amen. I want to be corrected. Amen. For training. It trains us in righteousness. How to walk this walk. We need training. When you're in the army, you need to go through basic training in order to know how to have combat. We need to be trained in the word in order to fight the enemy. Training in righteousness. So that the man of God may be adequate. Equipped for what? Every good work. Every good work. That's what the Bible is for. It's a trustworthy guide to guide us in the way that we need to go. It will equip us for every good work. Hallelujah. It exposes man's sin and hopeless condition. According to Romans 3.23, we all fall short of the glory of God. His perfect standard. Although we may not want to face our sinful condition... We can't simply decide to discard this passage. The good news is that even though we deserve death for the wages of sin, God's gift of salvation grants us eternal life. Thank God for that. Thank God it, it exposes us for who we are. It's just like a mirror. When you look in the mirror, you see your face for who you really are. Some of us probably want to run out of there when we see our faces in the morning. But, so, but you got to take a look at it in order to get your face right. Amen? Do I have the women in here? Amen? You got to get your face right. Amen? So you put on your makeup, and the only way for you to see that is by looking into the mirror. You got to look into the Word. The Word of God says in Hebrews chapter 4, 12, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, 
It penetrates down to the soul and the spirit. It gets down to the to the heart of the matter. Yes. See, if you want to get to the heart of the matter, let the word get to it. Yes. God will get a word that will get right down and, and let you know that's what the situation is. Mm-hmm. This is what the problem. Yes. This is what I need to get right so I can get back on the right path. Yes. Yes. It judges the thoughts. And you know, people say things and it means something else. But the word it cuts through all that. Yeah. It cuts through all the nonsense. Amen. It gets right to the heart of the matter. See, you can fool people, but you can't fool the word of God. Right. Oh, right. come on, church. It says it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Yeah. So it exposes, it, it, it puts us out there. Amen. Sometimes you just got to put everything out on the table and let the word expose it so you can get it right. Amen. Yeah. It explains the person of the Holy Spirit and his work in our lives. We need to know who the Holy Spirit is. After Jesus' ascension, he sent the Holy Spirit to indwell in his followers. He's the one who explains the scriptures to us and empowers us to impact the world to accomplish his work. The Spirit also seals us, guaranteeing our salvation until the day of redemption when Jesus Christ returns. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise. Who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. So it teaches us about the Holy Spirit that works in our life. The Holy Spirit is our God. He is to lead us and guide us into all truth. It tells us how to be wise. You want wisdom? The Word of God is packed full of wisdom. The books of Proverbs and Psalms, along with many other passages, tell us how to handle our responsibilities and our relationships wisely. We need wisdom. Yeah. And that's what the word of God says. Amen. It tells us exactly what Proverbs is for. It says the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, is to know wisdom and instruction. To discern the sayings of understanding. To receive instruction in what? Wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity. To give prudence to the naive, to, to, to the youth, knowledge, and discretion. Wisdom. There is wisdom. The Word of God says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask. Mm-hmm. The Word of God is full of wisdom. Yes. It teaches us how to be wise. Yes. Yes. It teaches us how to endure difficulty and hardship. <laughs> we need to learn how to go through some things. Amen? Yes. From the scriptures, particularly Paul's epistles, we learn how to respond to trials as the Lord desires. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8 through 10. It says, we're afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not despairing. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. See, he always had a positive outlook on every situation. He realized that God still had him. He was struck down, but he knew God wasn't destroying him because he had a work to do. Come on now, church. Always caring about in the body the dying of Jesus. So that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So it teaches us how to go through. If you follow Paul in the Bible, it will teach you how to go through. Because Paul went through some things. Amen. If we think we're going through a little bit now, look at what Paul went through. He was beaten. He was persecuted. He was falsely imprisoned. Yet he still did not take his eyes off Jesus. Yet he went through. That's what he said. He said he realized that his suffering, amen, brought him closer to Jesus. Glory to God. It will teach us how to endure. Mm -hmm. The word also offers encouragement, amen. Sometimes when you're feeling down, you know, when you pick up the word of God, it just encourages you. It gets your spirit right, amen. When you're feeling like you can't go on and you open up to a scripture, God will give you a word that will keep you going. Amen. 
The word of God says in Isaiah 40, verse 29 and 31, he gives strength to the weary. If you're weary, God will give you strength. God will strengthen you in your body. Amen. I know many a time when I felt in my body like I was ready to give up. I felt the strength of God come on me and tell me, you know what? Keep on going. He gives strength to the weary. If you're weary, God will give you strength. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord. Somebody say, wait for the Lord. Oh, glory to God. When you wait for the Lord, God will give you something. Amen. It says they will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. That is an encouraging word to me. And I know that I will run and not get tired because God will give me strength. Oh, come on now. I don't have to get weary because God will strengthen me. Amen. Even people that lift weights and got the biggest muscles get tired. Come on now, church. That's what this word is saying. You can be the most fit person you want to be, but you're going to get tired. But thank God that there's a strength that will keep you going. Amen. That God has a strength And your weakness God is made strong Amen His strength is made perfect in your weakness So I'm ready to run Amen How many people ready to run And not get weary Hallelujah Amen Glory to God It's a promise book Amen There's a lot of promises in this word Amen Every promise in God In his word is backed up By his awesome power God can fulfill it Because he has the power to fulfill it Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Uh -huh. They are yes in Jesus. Amen. Every promise in this word is yeah. yes yeah. because of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, come on now. And the reason why we don't walk into these promises is because we don't get into the word. It's time for us to get in and, and know what the promises are so we can get a hold of that yes. Amen. Amen. And it says, and so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Amen. Yes and amen. amen. Somebody say yes, yes. and amen. amen. Glory to God through amen. Jesus Christ. So every promise he had in his word is yes in Jesus Christ. So we need to just say amen. amen. Let, the, let God has spoken. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. God's promises, and I believe they're coming to pass for Victory Fellowship. I'm saying yes and amen to what he's doing in Victory Fellowship. Do I have any witnesses in this house? Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the final thing, amen, I want you to remove the fear of death. I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians 15. And we're starting at the 50th verse. It removes the fear of death. We don't have to fear death anymore because of the word and what the word tells us. And it says in verse 50, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed. We will all be changed in a flash, in a twinkling of an eye. That's fast. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Amen. At the what? The last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. Somebody say, we will be changed. We will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable. And the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. That's why we don't have to fear death. Because death was swallowed up in victory. And then we say, where, oh death, is your victory? Where, oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. Oh, but thank God it doesn't end like that. But thanks be to God. Somebody say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, we don't have to fear anymore. Amen. We don't have to be unsteady in how we walk because it says stand firm. Somebody say stand firm. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. And I'm encouraging Victory Fellowship, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know, somebody say, you know, you know. that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Praise so we God. don't have to fear death because we know one day that trumpet is going to sound. Right. Yes. So I have some witnesses in this church today. We know one day that trumpet is going to sound. And I'm thankful that I'm going to answer that call to that sound. Praise when Jesus comes back, yes. if the angel say he's going to come back just like he left. Yes, oh, come on, church. Yes. He's going to come back yes. and the dead in Christ will rise first. Yes. And we will all be caught up to meet him in the air. Stand with me and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Stand